Hey, this is Clint from CT Mad Mods, and this week, Mike's back. He's got some rear bearings that are smoked. Let's pull this little sucker in and see what we're working with. said he had some sort of noise I went and drove it around yesterday and uh, that wheel bearing is smoked judging from the way the front end look it's no doubt it's from them tracks this is why you don't run tracks on a samurai let's see if we can make it make some noise probably wondering why he's missing his gauge cluster that's an upcoming video I don't know if you can hear it, but it's definitely making some noise. Let's get it up on the lift. Mike's in luck. I just happened to have a couple of uh, brand new rear axle rebuild kits. Um, they come with your new seal, the new bearing, and this little hooby doo that the seal rides on. Let's get this little guy up on the lift and see what we got going on. So the way you check for these bearings is you, you grab the wheel and you'll see, and you see if it moves this way. And uh, this one's not too bad. This is the passenger side, but you can kind of see this one's dipping in. So, see if I can get a shot of this. There's some movement there. Um, may or not may not be able to see it very well, but. Definitely when we lift it up off the ground, it tips in or tips out, whatever, whenever you lift it off the ground. So that rear bearing is smoked. And he had a set of Polaris like side-by-side -side tracks on this thing and our Can-Am, whatever they were. And um, that just puts a lot of wear and tear on these little axles. I hear people all the time ask, why don't I get tracks for my Samurai? And that's why, because you're gonna smoke bearings you know in a season his front axle was pretty messed up all the bearings were smoked and so we just rebuilt that front end here recently i told him he was probably going to end up having to do the rear end soon and sure enough here we are so i'm going to knock this out i'll show you how to do it we're going to press them bearings off and press some new ones on let's go all right so you take your wheels and tires off and then the next thing you want to do is take these four bolts off the 17 millimeter Okay, the next step will be to start disconnecting these uh, parts back here and I'm gonna have to disconnect the brake on his because this whole backing plate comes out with the axles. Mine don't do that. I've cut my backing plate and I have one of those SJ413 backing plates for the bearing and I can just disconnect mine and pull the axle. I wish I had some of those backing plates here. I would do his like that, but I'm gonna have to unhook the unhook the brakes and try to keep them from bleeding out while I'm doing this and then um, we got to put this backing plate make sure it stays on because uh, I've actually put the bearing on by mistake without putting the black backing plate back on so be careful all right on the back side of this hub you got four little bolts and you want to get on those four bolts they're 12 millimeter you want to break those loose and that's what is holding your axle in. There's, there's the four bolts right there. There's one, two, three, and four. So you wanna disconnect those. And mine has that backing plate and I've cut the hole out so those bearings fit through that hole. Uh, saw that on Ron Lucian's uh, YouTube channel, Fabin Adventures. If you haven't seen his channel, go check it out. He's got some cool content, lots of Suzuki stuff, and he's building a Chevy C10 now. I usually will grab a glove out of the trash and uh, stick it over these brake lines just so they don't sit there and leak out all over everything. And uh, just kind of push it out of the way. Just minimize the mess. 
Now these should just pop right out. Uh, if yours is being stubborn, you can put a slide hammer on, on this axle and beat it out. But I have had his rear end apart before. So that other one just popped out. Let's see. Yeah, it just pops right out. So, oh yeah, look at that bearing. Not supposed to look like that. Oh yeah, it's smoke. Ugh. Okay, let's get this apart. I'll give you a better look at that bearing. You can see how bad that is. It's bulging out on this side. So, yeah, that one's gone. All right, we'll get it changed out. While you're in here, go ahead and pull these, um, pull these seals out. Stubborn, being stubborn. There it goes. Pull them seals out. You're gonna change those out too. All right, I'm about to bang these bearings off. And I just wanna point out that there's like a little lip um, right there and it always faces on the inside. If you look at this bearing, you can tell that it goes this way. Um, this side goes towards the, the backing plate for the drum. And then this slips on there. Um, I've put these on in the past by just slamming them on, but I've noticed that if you just slam them on uh, without any heat, um, eventually this thing can get loose. I've pulled my axle out before and this thing was loose. So I use heat and then slam it on. Uh, I think it like shrinks to the size of the axle. Um, this is a sealed bearing and so I'm, I'm gonna press it on. Here we go. Okay, I got the first one off. Let me show you what I did. So what I do when I take these off, and you gotta be really careful, you get a cutoff wheel that's kind of small and you kind of turn your axle to where you have a good angle, like it's angled in there like that. And then you start just kind of chopping in to this bearing and um, this sleeve right here, this first piece, you get a little line cut in there, and then you take a chisel, and you put it right in that line that you cut, and you whack that sucker, and what'll happen, let me see if I can get a good shot of this. All right, if you look at it, you can see that crack right there. You hit it with a chisel, and it'll, it'll crack that thing, and then this will just slide right off, so. That's the business. That's how I do it. You just got to be real careful. You don't want to nick your axle. Uh, and so I just take my time. And so I'll put it on warp speed and show you how I do the next one. I didn't even film it, but I got that bearing on there. And uh, man, it feels way better. I'm about to get this one off. Take my cutoff wheel and cut into that. Take the chisel, whack it out of there. And then pick these bearings up a little bit and whack them on there. I have a... Um, Got a piece of pipe that fits over it perfect. Just uh, slam her home. so I heated that bearing up just a little bit in the center like 30 seconds to a minute I mean you don't have to get it real hot but uh just use this pipe to kind of bang it on there now this sucker right here you need to heat up that sucker's hot
Okay, now that's on there. So it's ready to go back together. I went ahead and cleaned up this surface and I'm gonna just put a little bit of black RTV on that and uh, slap this sucker back together. I just put a little bit of black RTV on that um, just to kind of keep the water out, keep these bearings, let them last as long as we can possibly let them last. So I'm gonna let this tack up for a few minutes. Um, I think this is one minute gasket maker. So I'm gonna go use the restroom real quick and come back and then we're gonna slap these in. All right, got it back together. Got the brakes put back in there. I need to hook up the emergency brake. And when you put this thing in, you just kind of push it in. Um, I take a rubber hammer and pop, pop, pop a couple of times. Uh, and it seats that bearing inside there. Um, I put a little bit of black RTV. I'm gonna cinch that up right now. Got it all put back together. Throw the brake drums and the wheels and tires back on and bleed the brakes. All right. Mike's picking it up. See how it goes. Go uh, do the test drive home. <laughs> Don't do it. See you, bud. You. All right. Mike's got bearings. So that job takes about three hours. Um, Mike's on his way home and uh, happy customer. If you watch my video to the end, I appreciate you watching. Like, tell me what I did wrong. Y'all always do. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate the support. Thanks for watching my video.